Promises are a new feature in JavaScript as of ES6. But that means they're really useful to have them introduced as part of the language, right? Well, you're absolutely right. Promises are everywhere. And in this video, I'm going to show you what they are, how they work, and hopefully you'll understand why we should all be jumping for joy that we have them instead of callbacks. Now, in order to understand promises, let's define it. A promise is an object that may produce a single value sometime in the future, either a result value or a reason that it's not resolved or rejected. A promise may be in one of three possible states, fulfilled, rejected, or pending. Huh? Let's figure out what that means in this video so that by the end of it, that is all going to make sense to you. Now, in order to fully grasp the concept, we must first talk about what we had before promises, and that is callbacks. Something like this. When something is done, execute this piece of code. Callbacks in JavaScript are exactly that. I text my friend, Bob, and say, hey, Bob, what's that really good song by the Backstreet Boys? When Bob has time, he calls me back and says, oh, yeah, yeah, that song? It's I want it that way. And that's exactly what's happening here, too. We have an element that we're adding an event listener to. And when a user clicks, we're going to have the callback submit form. That is, once the user clicks, we're going to answer with submit form. Let's think of another example. Let's say we're creating a game. And we have this move player function that has the distance to move the player and the direction. Well, if I wanted to move player 100 to the left, I'd run that. Once that is done, I wanted to run a callback function, which is to move player 400 to the left again, and then another callback function right after that is done to move player 10 to the right, and another callback function to move player 330 to the left. And we have something called the Pyramid of Doom. This is obviously a simple example, but with callbacks, you'll get this nested, nested function, and you create this pyramid of really, really complicated code of this happens, then this happens, then this happens, then this happens. And it's really, really hard to read. Let me show you a more realistic example. Let's say we had some sort of an app that uses Twitter. And let me make this bigger so you can see. We have a grab tweets function that the first parameter has the URL. For now, I just simplified it. We just passed Twitter and the Twitter handle. And then the callback function, after you grab the tweets, which has an error and the tweets. And if there's an error, we throw an error. So that just creates an error in JavaScript. Otherwise, we're going to display the tweets. But then if Andre's tweets were successful, then we also want to grab the tweets again. Let's do Elon Musk this time. And again, if error, we're going to throw error. Otherwise, we're going to display his tweets. And if that's successful, then we're also going to grab uh, Vitalik Buterin's tweets. And again, if error, throw error. Otherwise, display tweets. And that doesn't look very pretty, does it? I mean, we have to do the same thing. We have to check for error at each time. We have it nested. And just overall, we have a lot of repetition of code. Now, promises serve the same purpose as callbacks. So why do we have two things? Well, promises are new in ES6, and they're a little bit more powerful. Let me show you what a promise looks like. You remember this move player code? Well, this with a promise would look something like this. Doesn't that look much, much better? But it's really hard to grasp what's happening here without really knowing how to create a promise. So let's start with that. I'm going to remove this and create our very first promise. We'll say const promise equals, and this is a new syntax that you'll just have to get used to, new promise. So we're creating a new promise. And this promise has a parameter that either resolves or rejects. And in here, 
in this function, we have the option to let's just say either resolve and let's just do stuff worked or reject. And in this case, we have an error, it broke. Now, we obviously want to have a conditional statement here. We'll say if condition, in our case, we'll just let it be true for now. If true, so this is if the promise returned, we're going to resolve it. Otherwise, we're going to reject. And here's the thing, this looks confusing without actually knowing the application, but I want you to just have this over here so you can take a look at it as we progress through this video. This is gonna make more and more sense. So now that we have a promise, if I put this into my console, my Chrome browser, all right, I have the promise now, but how can we get this promise to run now? Well, I can just do promise, dot then so again once the promise is resolved or rejected dot then i want to get the results and then we want to console dot log the result that's it so let's see what happens here i'm going to copy this paste it on here stuff worked all right so we ran the promise it ran this part and because we've just made if equals to true this is going to run the resolve and the resolve is going to send stuff worked into the result and we're going to console log stuff worked. and you also see over here that the promise is resolved again if i just log promise here i see that we have the promise with stuffed worked Awesome. Okay, so based on what we know now, let's just take a look at what we can do with promises. Let's say that now with stuffed worked, I want to grab the result and add an exclamation mark to it. And then, and this is called chaining in promises, then after I do that, it's going to return this, return the result with the exclamation mark. And in our case, I just want to get the result too. And we will just console.log result two. All right, well, let's see what happens now. So I have my promise, just to make sure that we have it here. Perfect. And we're gonna run the promise stuff worked with the exclamation mark very cool but what happens if something happens in between here we just have a console log but let's say we have an error and that error causes us to throw an error well what happens now with promises you can actually do something called dot catch and this will catch any error that the promise may have in our case, we just want to console.log. And now, if I run this, we console log the error. Let's just make this a little bit cleaner so that you can see exactly what is happening. There you go. So again, copy and paste. There you go, we get the error. If the throw error happens before, let's say it happens above, and we wanna return this. Well, if I move the throw error at the top over here, save, and again, copy and paste. Let's clean this up a bit and see that we still get the error. So dot .catch catches any errors that may happen between the chains dot .then, which is very, very cool. All right, so I have a little question for you. What happens if we do something 
along this line. Let me just go back to what we had before. We don't have an error in there anymore. But this time we have result two plus the question mark. So we're going to add a question mark to that. We're going to return that. We're going to catch with console.log error. And after that, we're going to have a dot then result three. And that result three will have result three plus, let's do another exclamation mark. And we want to console log this. So again, oops, we're going to console dot log this. All right, what do you think is going to happen? Let's see. We save, copy and paste, and look at that. We have stuffed worked or stuff worked exclamation question mark exclamation. So catch only runs if something fails in between here. But because I placed it before this, if this fails, well, I don't get the error console. I get an error within our console because we it did throw an error, but the catch statement never runs. So where you put the catch statement is it's going to check and run if anything before it fails. All right, awesome. So that's how we create a promise. A promise has a resolve and a reject. And so far it's only been resolved. It's just worked out. We've never run the reject. We'll do that later on. But we see that with a promise, we can give it to a variable and run this and do something with it asynchronously when we run dot then and get the result and do whatever you want with it. We can keep chaining it and we can also catch our errors. A promise is something that you have now that you can use around your code even though you don't have the value just yet. You can just assign it to a variable like we did here to a const promise. Now, when would this be a good thing? Well, promises are great for asynchronous programming. If you don't remember what that is, make sure you check out my video on how JavaScript works to grasp the concept. When you don't want JavaScript to block the execution of your code, like making API calls, grabbing data from a database, or maybe optimizing an image, you use a promise so that the task happens in the background. When the promise gets resolved or rejected, then you'll get that response. Now, Let's show you something else that promises can do that makes them really, really powerful. Let's say that within here, we had another promise, a const promise two, and this promise again has a resolve reject Now we can make this a little bit smaller. And this resolve reject is going to have a set timeout. So a set timeout is a web API. It allows us to timeout and run something after a few seconds. So set timeout, we're going to say resolve in 100 seconds or 100 milliseconds, the high text. Okay, don't worry too much about the syntax. Essentially, this is saying run this and return resolve high in 100 milliseconds. Let's also have another promise. Let's say promise three, and this one resolves in one second, and this one's gonna say pookie. And then finally, a fourth promise, and this fourth promise is going to resolve in three seconds, and it's going to say, is it me you're looking for? All right, so we have these promises. Well, again, a feature that we have is 
something called promise.all. And promise.all takes an array of promises, in our case, promise one, promise two, promise three, and then let's do promise four. That's a lot of promises. And in here, we can do a dot then, and the values will be returned as an array in the order that they were just written down. And here we can just console.log values. Let's save. And I'm going to copy this into our console. Actually, let's just copy and paste all of these. Watch the bottom of the screen here as I press enter. One, two, three, four, five and we have our result five seconds later. You see here that even though these ones took a lot less, well, because we did promise that all, it waited until all the promises were resolved and then logged out the values. Very cool. And by the way, the reason that if I do this, where I assign the variables first and then run promise that all the result is instant and that is because we've already run these promises right we've assigned it to a variable and between the time that we copied and pasted this in here these promises in the background have been resolved all right let's finish up with the final example that has some real world applications so that you have an idea of when we want to use promises I'm going to delete this, refresh. Now, I have here a list of URLs. And these URLs are from a simple API. Let me show you. Called JSON placeholder. And they just give us some endpoints that we can use, such as users that return us some JSON data. So I have users, posts, and albums here. And this is very similar to something you do on a website where you want to grab some information, maybe from your server, from the database with users, posts, and albums. And let's say that they're all important to us for the page, for the profile page of the user. How can we grab them all? Well, again, using promises, we can just do promise.all and we can just grab the URLs and in this case, we can just map over this. So it's an array. And with each URL that we grab, we want to, we want to fetch, again, a web API to grab the URLs, make an AJAX call to the URL. Dot then, we want to run the response through the response.json. Again, that just comes with fetch that you need to do. And then from here, we can do a dot then. And this is gonna return us, remember, an array because we're getting a promise of all these fetches. It's gonna return results. These results, well, for now, let's just console.log them. And we'll do results the first one the second one and the third one let's see if that works i'm going to copy all of these let's go back to our page copy and paste our code waiting a bit and there you go there's our response we see that we got undefined here because i put three here instead of two. Let's do that. We copy and paste this again. I'm gonna refresh the page. And there you go. We have our users, we have our posts, and then we also have our albums. Very cool. Let's say that something fails here. Maybe we misspell one of the URLs. So the users API won't work. 
Let's add a dot catch and console.log. Error. If I copy and paste this, refresh, and again, run this through the console, look at that, we get an error. With promise.all, if everything fails because we need users, posts, and albums for our entire page on our website, we get a reject from the promise and we can catch it. And we can do whatever we want with this error. Very cool. All right, so let's fix that. So it's working again. And there you go. That's why promises are so beneficial. We're able to do something like this in a very clean way. Remember, the fetch simply returns a promise. If I just run fetch here, you see that I get a promise that's pending. And by adding a dot then, we are answering to whatever the promise returns with, whether it's resolved or rejects, and we get to manipulate the data. So at their most basic, promises are a bit like event listeners, except a promise can only succeed or fail once. It cannot succeed or fail twice. And this is extremely useful for things that are asynchronous success and failure, such as API calls, because we're less interested in the exact time something became available and more interested in reacting to the outcome. So we're reacting to something that happens asynchronously. So again, let's remember what we started with. A promise is an object that may produce a single value sometime in the future, either resolved or rejected with the reason why it was rejected. And a promise may be in one of three possible states. It can be fulfilled, rejected, or pending. See, that wasn't so bad, was it? Now go off and practice some promises and see all their power. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.